How ancient wisdom correlates information between different systems including yoga, ayurveda, vastu shastra and vedic astrology is beyond phenomenal. In India, a lot of emphasis is given to vastu shastra and I knew that I wanted to speak about this connection between vastu and sleep. something that has not been spoken about before in the sleep space in today's episode we will answer three questions how does vastu imbalance in a home impact sleep what would be ideal vastu for great sleep what can be done if your home or your bedroom does not have ideal vastu Michael Mastro is an award-winning designer, past president of Global Construction and an expert in the art and science of vastu. Renowned spiritual teacher Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, founder of Transcendental Meditation, asked Michael, a teacher and practitioner of meditation, to design spiritual centers worldwide for him in the late 1970s michael then became the leading western expert on the art and science of vastu and designed and built for microsoft and boeing during his career let's get started Hey everyone, I'm Deepa, a light functional medicine practitioner, author and yogini and you're listening to the Sleep Whisperer podcast, the only sleep podcast with conversations and meditations. I'm on a mission to share profoundly insightful sleep conversations with global visionaries that merge together functional medicine and ancient wisdom. Breathe in bliss through weekly guided meditations and let yourself enter the land of dreams. Together, let's unravel the pieces, get to the roots and understand the right tools to transform your sleep completely. Through this podcast, I want you to dream the best version of yourself. It's time to regain hope and begin your sleep journey. Michael welcome to the Sleep Whisperer podcast it's my absolute honor and pleasure to host you today talking about vastu and sleep which i think will get a lot of downloads since it's such a unique topic in the space of sleep one doesn't quite think about vastu and how it plays in our sleep and there's so much spoken about sleep today all over the world sleep challenges but have you ever thought about whether vastu plays a role and i know that in india there are of course a lot of people who do bring attention to this and this uh, it's spoken about even in families that don't place your head in a particular direction but we don't hear this in a sleep space so i don't think i've heard a single sleep specialist talking about how vastu plays a role and um i know that you have a really deep rich uh, personal story coming into the practice of vastu and of course you're well revered today but before we jump into vastu and sleep i'd love to know your story and uh, how the beatles played a role or at mm-hmm. least the age of the beatles sure Yeah, I was very fortunate uh at a young age I was uh an arch- young architect and very fortunate to meet Maharishi Mahesh Yogi the Beatles guru and uh he asked me to design some buildings in Rishikesh um uh, some meditation buildings um and it was at his feet that I learned about vastu he would describe certain buildings and it was a very palpable uh experience where you actually felt like you were in the building you could smell everything and we didn't even talk about vastu but it he was giving the orientation the proportions and all of the very key uh aspects of vastu when he would describe these buildings that he wanted me to uh to design 
And so, yeah, this is where I uh, learned, very fortunate to learn at his feet about Vastu. And then when I came back to the United States, uh, I utilized those uh, principles of Vastu to design the first Microsoft building and some buildings for Boeing. This is back in the late 60s, early 70s. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, little by little, I was designing a lot of houses and office buildings usually using Vastu. And people kept asking me, what can you do for existing buildings? I love my house. You know, what can I do to make it Vastu compliant to support my family's health, my family's sleep, uh, you know, prosperity, uh, harm, harmony in relationships, uh, and my career. And so these are the techniques that I had learned about in Rishikesh that I still do today. And Michael, that sounds like such a divine blessing to be there back then at the right place at the right time. And I think there's no learning as powerful as learning under the feet of somebody. And obviously, you grasped that so beautifully and taken it so much further. And uh, I would love for us to talk a little bit because the audience might be very new to Vastu. So maybe we could begin with a very quick overview about yeah. what is generally Vastu, what do different directions mean? Because I know for me, listening to you a few days ago was very new knowledge in spite of being in India. I just did not have a clue as to direction. So once I listened to that, I was in my mind going over where is my desk facing, where is my bed facing. So could we just do an overview first before we sure. go into the specifics of sleep? So, so Vastu means building and Shastra means science. It is Vastu Shastra is the science of building. And so uh, Vastu is the sister science to Ayurveda, the science of healing, and to Jyotish, uh, the science of, of the stars and how they affect us, the, the astrology. And they work very closely. They're very interconnected. And so what the aim of these three sister sciences is to, is to reduce stress. To, bal to balance the five elements, earth, water, the Panchamahabhutas, the earth, water, fire, air, and space. So Ayurveda is balancing those five elements in the body. So we feel very productive, uh, less illness, uh, all those things. And then Vastu takes it a step further to balance the five elements in the body of our body, which is our, our environment, our house, our residence, our office, uh, so that we feel uplifted in our space, so that we can utilize our full potential and, uh, you know, do well, be productive in our career and with our family. And then Jyotish takes another step further to balance the five elements in the cosmos and reduce the planetary stress because all three of these sister sciences, they affect about a third of our success in life, our ability to sleep deeply and get good rest, our ability to be healthy, our ability to be prosperous, our ability to have good family, good relationships, and a very fruitful career to, to live up to our full potential and, and actually know what our dharma is, what we came here to do, how we came here to help ourselves and other people. So these these three sister sciences are all about, you could think about reducing stress and they all come from one part of the Vedas is called Athar Veda. And this is how to, this part of the Vedas is how to improve the quality of your life. So you see yoga, pranayama, meditation, and all these sister sciences coming from Athar, Athar Veda. And, uh, so there again, Vastu is in an overview really is just aligning your physical body and your environment to uh, two forces of nature, the positive solar energy that comes from the east and the positive magnetic energy that comes from the north. And when we talk about sleep and what direction you sleep in and what direction you face when you work, 
it's really, again, all about aligning yourself to these earthly, uh, the earthly grid system, basically. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of an overview. And uh, then, you know, from there we get into, you know, what we can do uh, to your environment to balance those five elements. Because if one or more of those five elements is out of balance, it's going to affect your sleep and everything else in your life. And Michael, could you also give us, before we go into the specifics as to uh, what each of these directions re should represent. So which part of our, uh, I know there is uh, certain aspects of, you know, why rooms come into certain directions. So what are those connections? Sure. So each of the five elements is associated with a specific direction and a specific area of your life. So uh, the, the northeast area of your home or office is associated with the water element. And the water element has to do with growth, any kind of growth in your life, spiritual growth and financial growth. Most people think about it in terms of their finances. So if there's some kind of reduction in the water element because there's, for example, a stove or a missing corner in the northeast, this reduces the water and can impact your, your ability to, your finances, basically, your prosperity. Southeast area of your home or office has to do with the fire element, Agni. And uh, this is your energy level, whether you have good energy to, to be productive in your life, whether you have a good prana in your energy field to be healthy and, and vi vi have a lot of vitality. Um, and your longevity, all of those things are associated with that fire element. And the fire element is what is the Agni that um, digests the food. So you can say that every area of your life is connected to whether you have good digestion, your GI is in good, uh, good shape, you know, that, that Agni, that fire, that warmth um, is, uh, helps you digest the food so that you have good energy and you have good sleep. It's connected to sleep as well. Then the Southwest area of your home or office is associated with the earth element. The earth element is what supports us. How uh, your physical structure, uh, your spine, your neck, your shoulders, your legs, your feet, uh, to how you support yourself and your family, your career, what you came here to do, your life purpose. And then the northwest area of your home is associated with the mind, the thoughts, and uh, whether your thinking and your actions are harmonious. And if there's some imbalance or dosha in the northwest area of the house, maybe missing corner or extension, then uh, this can affect your thinking, your actions, your, your speech, and what happens when your speech is not harmonious is the relationships. Uh, there's some stress in the relationships. So all of those are impacted. Now, the very center of your house is the space element, ether element. And it is the mother of the other four elements. So if there is any imbalance in the center, like a furnace or a heavy staircase or a toilet or any of those things, that can reduce the space element and uh, affect every area of your life. Now, when we talk about sleep, any imbalance in say the Southeast is going to make your, your pitta increase. And this can affect your sleep. You'll wake up in the middle of the night, not be able to go back to sleep. If there's an impact to the water element in the Northeast, the water gets reduced. Then water is that moon energy, that calming energy, and that can affect your sleep as well. Then each of the planets is associated with the direction as well. So the Northwest is related to the planet moon. Moon is mind and emotions. So if there's some, uh, the air element gets uh, reduced for some reason because of a missing corner or no windows or doors in the Northwest, then uh, this can affect the mind and emotions and your sleep is not good. Vada kicks up, you know, uh, the Vada dosha. And then the Southwest is more the Kapha energy, that earth element. 
And, and so if you are, the earth element gets reduced by fire or water there or missing corner or extension, uh, then the sleep won't be grounded. You know, you, you, you need some grounding energy, some earth energy for you to sleep deeply and, and uh, throw off the stress that you gained in, you know, in your days. And so you see how each of these directions and these elements can affect the sleep as well. And you know, Michael, when you spoke, there were so many things that went through my mind because I, when you describe the overall elements in the home, all of those could be potentially. You spoke about Agni and how the gut and today there's so much being spoken about gut is at the center of all health. But I mean, these yes. are ancient teachings in Ayurveda and now you're yes. correlating that with Vastu. But almost each of those areas you described could be potential root causes for poor sleep. Now, of course, I love for us to... Sp uh, talk specifically about sleep first in terms of what would be ideal vastu for great sleep meaning which part of the house should a bedroom be in which part should the headboard is this different and unique to different uh, people based upon either their prakriti the body constitution or as also their uh, Vedic astrology there I mean there must be so many nuances to deciding about the individual in a home there is and it's 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 mostly based on their dosha type the primary dosha type you know we are also have sub sub dosha types so just for example if you are a pitta primary pitta uh, say pitta vata pitta karfa uh, then uh, if you're sleeping in the southeast, the pitta dosha gets aggravated and it would definitely affect the sleep. You, your mind, you know, you're anxious, you're, you're, it's hard to get to sleep and, and you wake up and you can't go back to sleep. So uh, the pitta uh, type person, their sleep gets pacified if they're sleeping or spending more time in the southwest area of the house that will ground that pitta energy and so southwest is good for them so a vata primary dosha type the mind is going all the time and it's very hard to sleep and you keep you know uh, uh thinking about things and all that and so a vata person should if they sleep in the northwest area of the house then that aggravates the vata and again if they are sleep, can sleep in the south, southwest, or west area of the house, that grounds that vata energy, more pacifying the vata. Now, if you're kapha, uh, that uh, can those kapha people can not sleep. Uh, they'll sleep a little bit less if they're sleeping in the southwest or the northwest. So it's pacifying their their kapha dosha. Um, whereas if they're sleeping in the Northeast or the Southwest, it might aggravate that Kapha Dosha. But generally, you know, in Vastu, we think of uh, beyond the Doshas, uh, the master of the house is particularly uh, directed to sleep in the Southwest area of the house. And that is because whoever sleep more towards the Southwest has more control. So when I designed the Microsoft building, I put Bill Gates in the southwest corner of the building to have more control over the company. And in a family, the master of the house, you know, the, the husband and wife, if they're sleeping closer to the southwest, then it's better they have more control over the children. Whereas if the children are sleeping in the southwest, they tend to have more control and they run their parents crazy. <laughs> And that's what is happening in my home, I think, Michael, because I went to the direction and that's where my son's room is. And I can totally see that happening today in his teens. <laughs> it's very interesting. But yeah, generally we, we go, you know, we can tell by the dosha. And, but most people sleep pretty well in the south, southwest or south uh, uh the west area of the house. So even if you're kapha, it won't hurt too much. Um, 
So yeah, those are the directions. And then the direction you sleep in those rooms is really has an effect on the quality of your sleep. Whether many of your listeners, you know, they sleep seven, eight hours, but they wake up and they don't feel refreshed. And this is due partly, it can be due to many Vastu factors, but mainly it's the it's the direction that you're sleeping in. So uh, we say in Vastu, never sleep with your head or your headboard to the north, your feet pointing south. And the reason is our body is a magnet, the positive polarities in the head and positive magnetic energy comes from the north. So if we are sleeping with our headboard on a north wall, feet pointing south, it's like bringing two positive ends of, of a magnet together or, or two magnets together. The two positive ends will always repel. It disturbs the blood flow, the circulation, the digestion. And over time, you're not releasing that stress and you're not waking up feeling refreshed and it's disturbing the overall sleep. So any other direction, west, east or south is good. Particularly if you have health issues, south is the best direction because it completes that magnetic cycle when you're sleeping. Now, if your house is not aligned to the cardinal directions, that means you're not aligned to the longitudinal, latitudinal lines. Maybe your house faces uh, southwest or southeast or northwest or north northeast. Then avoid northeast and northwest as well. So those are the main things. East is maybe the second best direction. West would be the third best direction after south. Um, but yet yeah, never north. And uh, I've been involved in lots of studies where, or a couple study actually, in hospitals where they'll take 50 patients recovering from a similar surgery. And while they're recovering from the surgery, 25 of the headboards would be in the north direction and 25 would be in the south direction. And what they find, even within a period of three days, is the head people with the headboards to the north are having less REM cycles, this is a sleep an indication of deep sleep, and uh, shorter uh, REM cycles. Whereas the patients with their headboards to the south, feet pointing north, are having more REM cycles and longer REM cycles. So they're sleeping more deeply. And what they find in these studies is the patients that are sleeping with their headboards to the north, north wall, uh, they're not recovering as quickly. They're having more complications, even within that short period of time. That's so interesting, Michael. And of course, you spoke about the east, west, and the south. And um, obviously, in a home, there are so many people. And then sometimes it's not always practical yeah. to see exactly somebody's body constitution. And so, therefore, yeah. there must yeah. be some. Now, I know that we do want to discuss because since you spoke about ideal bedroom position and the ideal headboard, but let's talk about what if the house were not in sync with the ideal and what can we do? Because uh, as you rightly pointed out just at the start that people shouldn't get stressed that their home is not, I mean, it's not always practical that they can change their home or change the position of their bedroom. So what can they do when the situation is not ideal? Yeah, so I, I, I go to many homes and people contact me from all over the world every day. You know, what can I do? Like, just like you're saying. So uh, even if your bedroom is not in an ideal location, Try to sleep with your head uh, not to the north. And, and uh, I go in lots of bedrooms and uh, it's not even possible for the headboard to be on. Uh, uh, the only place to put the bed is the headboard goes on the north wall because of the doors and windows in the other directions. So then I say something very weird. <laughs> I tell them, you know, fine, you can have your bed there, but it when you go to sleep, just throw your pillow on the other end of the bed and try for two weeks sleeping with your head on the opposite end of the bed if, if it's north. And what they people see 99% of the time is after a few days of getting used to this, 
they're sleeping much more deeply, waking up much more refreshed. And it's, you know, the the body needs to repair itself and sleep and meditation, yoga, all these things are designed to reduce that stress in the body so that we don't get these illnesses and we can uh, function much, much better. And so, uh, yeah, this is a, an opportunity that everyone has to change that position, even if the bed is not in the right direction. Perfect, Michael. And I do want to ask you one question because it's very relevant in today's modern world where um, we're talking so much about being sympathetic, dominant and fight or flight and how most of the world is overactivated. And I know you spoke in the beginning about the moon energy in a direction which allows you to calm down and instantly my mind went to the parasympathetic, the calming, the uh, lunar and how in our body the ida and the pingala and but I don't want this to go into all of that. I would just love to know in the present situation when most of the health challenges and sleep challenges are a result of being in an overactive mode. Uh, so in this context, what would your recommendation be for Vastu in the home, Vastu in the bedroom, the headboard for somebody who's unable to wind down their mind is constantly on hyper alert so uh, i'm just going to mention something uh, that should come later but but since you made it mentioned the eat in the pingala so this is a vastu and ayurvedic uh, tip is be when you wake up in the morning hopefully you've had a good rest you roll to the right side for a few minutes until the left nadi, left nostril opens and the left, you know, so the left nadi is open. And then you, when you get out of bed, you put your right foot down first. So this sets up the biorhythm for the day to, to come, come into activity in a more uh, restful than agitated state because the right nadi is, you know, for sleep, for sex, for eating and things like that. The left nod is more for um, intuition and being very creative and very productive. And it will get you more into, instead of that stressful fight or flight mode, more the parasympathetic, as you were saying. So that's one uh, tip. Now, in terms of the bedroom, what else can we do? So, uh, Many things are there for in terms of Vastu. So having uh, um, the, the room dark as possible, if you could put some blackout shades, you know, and not having any kind of night light. And because the eyes, if, you know, as soon as you wake up and there's some light, even you look at a clock and it kind of activates the mind, it's hard to go back to sleep. So as dark as possible is one thing. Then the other thing is reducing the clutter in the bedroom. Anything that's not organized it, it will uh, add, can affect the, the sleep and the mind, and especially whatever you put underneath your bed. So better not to have anything under the bed. Some people have their mattress directly on the floor. That's not good. Good to have some gap, some airspace under the bed and not putting anything under the bed. If you have to have some storage under the bed, it could be some sheets and, and bedding and things, but never books, never uh, shoes. Shoes pick up the energy from wherever you've been. That, again, can agitate the sleep and, and affect you. Not even shoes in the bedroom if you can't help it. And so... Uh, in terms of other things, um, again, uh, when you're going to sleep, there's a few things that you can do that are very beneficial. Uh, one is uh, aromatherapy, having some lavender, lavender plant in the bedroom, lavender aroma is calming, as well as rose and jasmine can be also there uh, in terms of uh, aromas. Uh, the other things is putting a piece of small piece of rose quartz in the four corners of the bedroom. 
this is having a very calming effect on the sleep as well. Then in terms of what can you do uh, when you, keeping all the um, uh, electronics out of the bedroom. So no TV, no not charging your phone next to your bed, not keeping your phone there, not looking at the phone, no screen time before you go to sleep. All of these things uh, have a big effect. So in Vastu, we look at uh, seven different things that create some stress uh, that affects your sleep as well as your health and other, other things. One is if you're aligned to the cardinal directions. So when you're not aligned to the cardinal directions, that means you're not aligned to the earthy grid system. It distorts the energy field in the house and it affects your thinking. So again, the vata will be activated, the pitta can be activated, affecting the sleep. And there, we're never going to ask you to pick up your house and turn it one way or another. But there are some Vastu remedies through a Vastu consultation that, that can easily correct this without any, any remodeling or anything. The yeah, second thing that affects uh, the, the stress in the house is the placement of things like toilets and stove and uh, the electronics, like we were just talking about the router in your house, router, never have a router in the bedroom if you can, you know, uh, affect it. And many people now, including my wife, is very sensitive to electromagnetic frequencies. So that's one of the Vastu things is earth energies, underground streams, underground utilities, um, you know, the pipes, uh, the water pipes and the, the electrical uh, wiring and all of these things. In India, you're in the forest, but in the cities, they have these all these wires going over the house. And it's just a lot of electromagnetic frequencies everywhere. And this affects the sleep. So uh, we've developed some uh, a USB plug that will go into any outlet in the wall, anywhere in the world. And this uh, transforms the wiring in the house to set up a protective shield against uh, 5G to protect you from uh, the 5G frequencies. And also we have a pendant that contains paramagnetic material that, that transforms these electromagnetic frequencies that support the, the prana in, flow in the body and does not um, create uh, incoherent waves that, that affect our, our uh, the frequencies in the body. So those are one a couple things. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, the shape of the house, even the shape of the bedroom. If you have a missing corner in the bedroom, maybe you have a closet that sticks out and there's a little hallway or a lot of modern houses don't have doors and they lead to a master bathroom or another bathroom or some other closet. This creates an extension or a missing corner and some energy gets stuck. You can think of that energy flow is like a river. And if there's a bend in the river, some of the water a, uh, uh, stagnates and it creates an anti-clockwise motion and creates some pollution. And the same thing happens with the energy flow in your house or your bedroom if it's not uh, got four corners. More, more than four corners, then there's some energy getting stuck and this will affect the sleep. So if it's getting stuck in the Northwest, it's agitating that vata, that the lot of thinking going on while you're trying to fall asleep. And if it's in the nor uh, Northeast, then the water gets reduced and that calming energy is not there. And if it's in the Southeast, then the pitta gets up, you know, like uh, more agitation, harder to fall asleep. And Southwest, missing corner or extension, then there's not that grounding earth energy. So the sleep. So a couple other things we can do while we're following sleep is uh, you can do, uh, many of your listeners may or may not know about Ujjayi breath. It's called Darth Vader breath. I can just, um, your attention goes to the back of the throat. If you put your hands on your stomach, laying on your back, and you do about seven or eight deep, long, slow, deep Ujjayi breath through the nose, this is very calming to the system. Other pranayams are, you know, alternate nostril breathing, nadi shodhana, uh, breathe out in, 
out in, back and forth. This can be balancing the left and the right hemisphere of the brain and calming the system. The other thing is um, uh, uh, breathing into the count of four, holding for the count of six, and breathing out to the count of eight. This is also uh, a pranayama that can be very calming. Now, in terms of mantras, there is some mantra that's very calming. And we'll get into more of this when we talk about uh, Vedic medical astrology um, in our next uh, episode. But, but the moon is very related to sleep because it's mind and emotions. And the Devata mantra for uh, moon is Vasu. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namaha. This, instead of counting sheep, that's what we do in the West to fall asleep, uh, just chanting that a few times is very, very calming to the system. So those are some, some of the Vastu things. You know, the other thing is um, having a little bit of a cup of copper or uh, a copper cup with some water next to you that can be calming. And then you drink that water when you wake up in the morning to it's at room temperature. It can, you know, release the toxins in the body when you wake up. Um, and then having a regular sleep habit, you know, make sure that you finish your dinner before, before seven o'clock. This is very hard for a lot of people now, but having a routine, uh, and then going to sleep before 10 o'clock. And, uh, and then you will wake up before the sun uh, rises in the morning, you know, five, six o'clock in the morning. This routine is very good. And seeing the sun, if you're in a part of the world where you can see the sunlight when it, the sun rises, this um, creates the, balances the melatonin in the body and, and uh, it, it'll balance that sleep cycle for you. So those are some some environmental Vastu tips. Um, and you shared a lot, Michael. And in fact, <laughs> uh, uh, I was smiling when you said that you it's not recommended to sleep on the floor on a mattress because I would always say that I get such great sleep when I sleep on the floor on a mattress. So I, I wanted to quickly ask you uh, why that is not recommended because, you know, in traditionally many ashrams as well, I mean, we would sleep on the floor in a mattress and uh, for me, maybe because I'm so vata dominant, I feel grounded and I'm always saying that I feel supported when I'm on the floor. Uh, could you clarify that as to why that's not recommended? So one thing is the earth energies. You want some gap there to be, not be affected by underground streams, underground channels, and then in terms of the utilities, especially if you're in an apartment building, you know, there's un the wires and the pipes in the floor and all that. You're picking up all that radiation coming from those things. Uh, and uh, so that's why there's some, some gap will help. And even with the headboard, keep some gap four inches away from the wall so you're not picking up all that radiation. Uh, in the United States, when I design a house, a Vastu house, we set it up so there's a switch in the bedroom that shuts off all the, the wiring that goes around the bedroom is, is completely, uh, you know, not activated while you're sleeping. Again, reducing that electromagnetic frequencies. So if you have to have a TV in the bedroom, some people just have to have it. Then cover up with silk. Silk is a barrier for radiation. So then that's one thing you can do. But try to keep the cell phone, try to keep computers out of the bedroom, the router and all the other screen things that we do. And stop screen time at least an hour or so before bed. Definitely. Read a book, do something like that. 
and i think what you shared about the mattress makes sense in an apartment and maybe that's also why i felt good lying on the mattress on the floor because i've always lived out in nature no apartments mm. there's nothing around us and yeah. uh, i feel so good when i put the mattress on the floor and it's i've always lived in areas where it's there's no one around me even growing up Uh, and maybe there is a big difference living like that versus living in an apartment. So I suppose all these little inputs matter so much too. But you did share a lot, and I, of course, want to respect that we are almost out of time for the episode, and I'm sure it's already a lot. to grasp for somebody who's new to vastu so if somebody would like to consult with you or get your uh, vastu for their home or to improve their sleep where can they find you so the website is vastu creations with an s dot com what well, a one word there and uh, they can also contact me for a free uh, um vastu uh, book ebook uh, at michaelmastrovastu at gmail.com and maybe you can put that in the somewhere you know wh- where the podcast is shown um and yeah I'd be happy to send you that free uh vastu ebook with lots more tips in that and then yeah if you wanted to get a consult I do consults for people all over the world India Mongolia everywhere and people all they do is send me a little sketch you know if if you just live in a bedroom draw a rectangle and where's your bed and where's your desk and and uh you know where's the toilet where's the um uh, stove and things like that and then i will based on that do an analysis of your home and send uh, mail you or even email you the yantras and give directions on how to place that to provide the remedies without any remodeling so it's a very inexpensive way to get a vastu compliant house no matter where you live if you're next to a cemetery or if you're in a house that's totally not vastu compliant so yes so those are the things thank you michael for your wisdom today and we'll definitely have you back on an episode cuz i do want to talk about vedic astrology and how that might interplay with sleep but thank you for talking about vastu today thank you so much for uh sharing this precious knowledge with your listeners In this episode Michael Mastro shared immense wisdom from his years of vastu experience. I simply must wrap up this episode by sharing my takeaway from it which is that we must not have fear when it comes to knowledge like vastu. We live in a world where practitioners themselves can leave us with fear that something is not right. I remember when I was a vulnerable young girl in a new marriage and a practitioner of ancient wisdom frightened me by telling me that the energy in my home was negative and unless I agreed to have him do some corrective ceremonies my marriage would fall apart well my marriage back then did end in divorce but i wish i had met a reassuring practitioner such as michael mastro if someone does make strong statements and use fear my advice would be to find another practitioner in the meantime if you'd like guidance correcting the vastu in your home i hope this episode helped you in feeling inspired to go down that road have a great day Hi everyone I hope you enjoyed the show today just a reminder that this podcast is for information purposes only it is not a substitute for professional care by a doctor or otherwise qualified health professional this information is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or the professional advice or services if you are looking for personal help on your health journey do seek out a qualified professional 
please do make your own health care decisions based upon your research and in partnership with a qualified health care professional. It is in no way intended as medical advice or a treatment or cure for any condition. Be sure to always directly work with a qualified practitioner before making any changes to your diet or lifestyle that may feel out of your realm of comfort or understanding. If you are looking for an allied functional medicine practitioner, do seek out more information on www.phytothrive.com. It is important that you have someone who is qualified and understands your health personally in order to provide adequate care, especially when it comes to chronic health condition. Be sure to subscribe to the Sleep Whisperer podcast on your favorite podcast app to get each episode as soon as it launches.